let's take a look at time stretching within Studio One 3. Now the time stretching feature allows us to take loops or audio samples and change their playback speed without signif significantly altering their pitch. Um, within Studio One you can increase or de decrease this playback speed by about 30 beats per minute plus or minus before you have any noticeable distortion uh, in your audio event. And of course the time destructive or time stretching feature is non-destructive and can be done at, uh, undone at any time uh, by changing the tempo mode within the track inspector and we'll take a look at that in a moment. Now there's two important things to take note of before we get started with uh, working with stretching our audio files and events and that is number one the audio files or loops need to have uh, BPM attached or encoded in that file in order for it to work at least automatically. We can manually make some adjustments and we'll get into that in a second. So if I let's bring up loops here you can see if I select a loop we can see the sample rate, bit depth, what type of file it is, how long, and what's most importantly for this video is the beats per minute. That is encoded within this loop and so we need that in order for Studio One to automatically do the time stretching. Now if I F9 and come over to files here and then come down to some of my older music here we have our sample rate, bit depth, the type of file, the length, but we're missing the BPM. So if we did have time stretching engaged uh, by default within Studio One and I bring this in, it's not going to time stretch this automatically. I'd need to manually do that and there, there's a couple different ways that this can be done. But <clears throat> before we get into that, also I want to mention that if we come to the start page and then choose to create a new song, take note of the option here, stretch audio files to song tempo. By default, this is not going to be des deselected. So then whenever we create audio tracks within our song, um, the tempo mode is going to be set to follow. If you would like for your audio files and loops to be stretched automatically, whenever you drag them into your song, then you'd want to check this box. And let's come back to our song. So with that time stretching disabled or unchecked within our song preferences, which we can also access by clicking on the sample right here down in the transport bar, we can see our song setup and then down below here it is unchecked. So we could change this at any time. We can also come up to song and song setup and access it here. Now in this way, with that deselected, when I press T to create a new track, I'll create a new audio stereo track and click OK. If I F4 and bring up the inspector, we can see that our tempo mode is set to follow. If I come back to the song setup options, turn on the stretch audio files to song tempo, apply, OK. I'll press T, open up a new, um, create a new audio track. Now let's take a look here. What is the tempo? It's set to time stretch. So that's going to be the difference. And I'm just going to come back and disable this for now. And what is the difference between these different modes? If I come back to the loop here that has uh, BPM encoded and drag this in, notice that it's kind of hard to see, but this is not going to be stretched I'm going to F5 and close out that. We can see that it doesn't quite line up here because the setting is on follow. And the follow setting basically means that I'm going to put this on bar 2. If I change the tempo or the beats per minute, say to 100, then follow will mean that this audio event will stay on bar 2. So let's go ahead and change that to 100. And as you can see, this stays in alignment with our musical grid. 
if I choose the don't follow and then change this back to 120 you can see it's not going to stay it's not going to follow this bar too you see that here so that's the difference between those two I'll go ahead and put that back there and of course time stretch you can see it automatically stretched our audio so I'm gonna control Z and put this back so it's not following and let's play this back and hear how it sounds along with the metronome here so we can hear that that's clearly not in alignment with the tempo but if we turn that time stretch on you can see it now expands out and adjusts itself we can then play back and now we're properly aligned with our BPMs for the loop and the song tempo if we've already got the uh, stretching feature on automatically then again these new tracks will be time stretched set up for this mode as you create them and then if I come to our loops and drag in a 140 BPM file here into our 120 you'll see that it's automatically going to be set properly as we drag it in so we're already good to go I'll mute the first one and let's play back Now when we're working with uh, time stretching in Studio One, there's also another uh, setting that we want to pay attention to, and that is the time stretch mode. By default, it's set to drums, and that works for our example here. We have a couple of other different options, though, and we can access those by clicking this drop-down menu next to time stretch. We have sound, which is just kind of a general mode that you can use on other types of tracks solo now this would be for if you have a vocal or a solo instrument say a trumpet playing by itself and you can use that and then the audio bend uh, this can be used when you're manipulating bend markers in an audio event or on the track I'm gonna delete these out and then take a look at how we can manually time stretch our audio I'm just going to change the song tempo to 100 and then select this uh, other loop here which is 130 beats per minute. I will drag this onto my track 1 which is set to don't follow so it's not going to time stretch that. And As you can see this doesn't line up right and if I play back along with the click track we can hear that that's not right so if we hover over the edge of this audio event and I hold down alt or option on the map Mac you can see we get our time stretch tool then I can click and drag this out my snap is on return to the beginning let's play back and we're in business. Now what if we have an audio file that doesn't have the BPM encoded in it? Let's take a look at that. I'll F9 and come to my files and I'm going to bring in an old track of mine. You can see we have it selected here and there is no BPM encoded. I'm gonna get rid of this first bit here. Move this up and let's hear how this sounds real quick okay so that's clearly off and I'm just going to
I'll take this first portion here, delete out the rest, and actually I'll move this in a bit here. So say this is what we have available and we'd like to stretch this. There's no BPM encoded within that file. What we can do is, um, the simplest way is if we already know what the BPM is but it's just not encoded, we can come over to the inspector and while this event is selected we can see that the file tempo is not set. So we can click once and then just type in a value ourselves. I can't remember what the BPM for this song is, probably 80 or 90. Um, but that's one way you can go about it. The second way that we can do this is by coming over to the edge and holding down control and alt. And this will give us access to our tempo tool. And then as I click and hold and drag, you can see that that is then adjusting. And if you take a note of that readout display, the speed up, you can see 0 0.87. That corresponds to down below here in the uh, track inspector. I'm going to control Z and return that back as it was. And the third method that we have available to us is if we don't have a problem with setting our song tempo to the track that we've imported in that we need to match up, we can use the tap tempo function. And it's important that if we're going to use this feature, we have don't follow disabled because what we're doing is clicking on the word here, tempo, and we follow along with the beat as we play back, and then this will adjust the tempo according to what we're hearing and tapping in here. So if you don't have don't follow engage and say you have follow or time stretch, it's going to do those real time and you're never going to be able to get it set properly. So if I play this back, it's it's a really short sample, so I probably won't be, be able to get it matched up just right, but I'm just going to try to find the beat and then click on tempo, and then you'll see that our song tempo adjusts uh, with our clicking. Okay, so yeah, I thought it was 80 or 90 beats per minute, and it looks like it's probably 80. But that's how the tap tempo function works. And the last thing we'll cover is, you know, kind of behind the scenes when we're working with time stretch. Studio One creates a time stretch cache, and it basically kind of renders a high quality version of this time stretch audio on your hard drive. And in this way, um, it's less intensive on your processor, and it can create these. Uh, higher quality files to play back. You can change how this works. You can turn that off and then it will read. It will play back the, uh, it will time stretch the files in real time as they're being played back. Uh, but again, this is going to be more intensive on your processor, but it will save you disk space if you're incredibly low on disk space. But with large hard drives nowadays by the terabytes, that shouldn't really be an issue. But just so you know that it is an option to turn off. And if we, if I control comma and bring up our options menu and then come to the advanced and then audio, we can see this use cache for time stretch audio files. And it is with this setting that by default, it's on by default, we're going to get that uh, kind of rendered audio on our hard drive that plays back at a higher quality our time stretched audio. If we deselect this, then it's going to play it back in real time and process it in real time. And so that's a look at working with time stretched audio within Studio One 3.